You're watching Queen City Collaborative Rebel Radio. I'm your host and CEO, Gwendolyn Bork. Let's not waste any time and get right down to it. Hi, everybody. My name is Gwendolyn Bork. I am the CEO and impact strategist for Queen City Collaborative. This is where I merge my talents as a financial advisor and working with businesses and high net worth individuals into my impact in the community. So uh, the whole goal with these podcasts are to highlight businesses or individuals in our community who are making a difference for our people. They have amazing stories to share. And today my guest is Mario Rodriguez. He's the owner of Forsetti Protection, and he's here to offer us some tools, tactics, resources, as businesses uh, start to plan to reopen here coming in hopefully May. So Mario, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Gwen. So if you could please, uh, you know, we have, we have a history as far as working together. Um, you've, you've been able to educate my, um, you know, my not-for-profit focus. It's an addiction prevention coalition. We work with uh, multiple school districts and helping to provide safety measures. And um, more specifically at that time, it was about active shooters. We had a lot of uh, things going on in the country at the time, and we wanted to educate our, our educational leaders and administration on the effects of you know, post-traumatic stress for these kids, even right here in Buffalo when these things were happening across the country. But you have other safety measures and other things that you present. So if you could, um, you know, what your organization does, your services, uh, the, the things that you focus on, and um, we'll get into the, you know, the rest of, you know, uh, of present day resources. Sure. No, I appreciate you having me. And uh, our organization is uh, considered a security risk management company here in Buffalo. Our headquarters is right downtown in the city. Uh, we've been here since 2012, and we've been helping different organizations from that time frame. So uh, to your point, yeah, prior to COVID-19, we were out helping organizations look at their safety strategies, looking to close those gaps between uh, anything from a security measure from access control and, and kind of the piggybacking aspects to uh, the actual training component for conflict management or active shooter training. So, uh, and since COVID, it, it's been quite a transition for uh, not only the Western New York community, but the entire country. Uh, the transition from uh, looking at some of these, um, these safety mechanisms and what the concerns were and the risks associated with that to now what one of the biggest risks is for each individual and uh, again, across the country. So, um, I've been taking everybody right through to really right around St. Patrick's Day. You know, we, we kind of, that's, I think, where everybody, everybody's lives really started changing. It went from one day, you know, the school's going to be closed one day on that Friday. Then it's like right. we're closing for a week and then we're closing for two weeks. So, you know, walk me through your mind as a business owner, what you felt was coming and how you had to uh, how you had to pivot as, as you know, things were happening on a rapid basis for your business. Yeah, rapid is probably the best, uh, best word for it. Uh, as that time, you know, backtracking, looking back, hindsight here, uh, that time frame, you, you were learning everything from almost an hour to hour basis, and it was consistently changing. And I think it was so many unknowns. Um, and, and so we were trying to navigate the water just like everyone else. Um, some of our clients were reaching out saying, you know, what do we do? How do we prepare? Hey, listen, we're just going to cancel this week and we'll probably be open next week. Um, or, you know, this meeting's canceled or, or what have you. And as that started to transition, uh, we kind of just looked at it as, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll cancel this meeting or we'll just have a phone conference today. And then we'll look ahead to next week and what we can do. The clients that we've worked with for emergency action plans and business continuity plans, we just told them, follow your plans, follow your action plans. And stick to them as, as the, the guiding reference since, you know, we can't uh, be there to help you actually on site. And then we'll, we'll position from there. Uh, I don't think anybody expected at that time uh, to be in this position, you know, almost the, what are we at a month and a half later now at this point. So it's been, uh, it's been a unique challenge, I think, for every single person to kind of navigate uh, the entire uh, new ways that we've kind of found ourselves in. You know, people think, um, you know, even for myself, like all oh, security, I'm thinking, you know, shatterproof glass, you know, the things that you offer, you know, access controls, you know, um, I know you work with a lot of different types of organizations and, mm -hmm. you know, not once, 
do you ever, do you ever really think that uh, an emergency or security plan could be something like this that is a virus, you know, a health crisis? So I appreciate that, you know, you were there ultimately talking to your clients, working with your clients to make sure, hey, follow the plan. You had a plan, follow the plan. So whether you have an active shooter or there's a, you know, an earthquake and a natural crisis, this is a health crisis, same protocol. Mm -hmm same way to move forward. So thank you for, you know, really working on the front lines with your clients at that time. I know as a business owner, every minute counts for income and they were already threatened with, uh, you know, possibilities of, you know, even losing their business. So um, yes. at least that was one component of, I'm sure security within them for their own business. So what's happened now, you know, since, since it's gone down and you're like, everybody has had to face this reality of this is it you know we're working from home we have these uh parameters put into place nothing's going to change until x day now we're at may 15th so walk me through um walk me through what what you're working at now what are you looking at what have you been doing yeah i think the the biggest aspect going is is uh people have a tendency to have the fear um, fear of the unknown fear of these capacities and risks that come along with uh trying to navigate uh, their business, uh, everyday business, without any security risks or anything associated with it. And you add some of these other factors like cybersecurity, or you add prior to COVID, the active shooter. Um, the reality is all of those fears are, are legitimate. And so the planning ahead of time prior to anything is what makes a business be able to be successful. Um, to that regard, if you have a plan in place, it eliminates those fears. It reduces them so that you have the opportunity to not have the emotion play into the judgments and you're able to actually have your business stay consistent and be effective going forward. Now, what we've been able to do, you know, as you're planning for something like, again, a cyber breach or a natural man-made disaster, hurricane, tornado, all the, the little aspects that come into that active shooter or any of those, if you have plans in place along those lines, you can adopt off the business continuity to make sure your plans are in place to make sure you can stay up and running. And that's kind of what we've been able to do from this time frame is, is kind of consult more uh, along those lines uh, since then. Looking at the COVID pandemic, we've been able to talk with organizations and say, okay, here's what we're, you know, the CDC recommends, here's where your, uh, let's say it's a restaurant that we've talked with, which we just did recently, talking about, okay, here's your capacity limit. Uh, you're only allowed 180 people in. Well, that's 100 people, 180 people in close quarters. Here's what your new adaptation might be looking at. Well, I can only have a table of four on this side of the room and a table of six on this side of the room. And, you know, that might be it for that side of the room. So kind of using your plans and, and you know, adopting those uh, to be more effective long term, along with uh, some new technologies as they continue to come out and look at. So that's been uh, the new norm. Yeah, you know, you were, um, you, you're you a very innovative business owner to begin with. I mean, even since, you know, I met you a couple of years ago and uh, we started really collaborating and partnering in, in different aspects of mm -hmm. the business world and the not-for-profit world that, you know, I'm the president of. You, you even brought on even more services like the cybersecurity. That has been a big one for, I think, a lot of businesses right now. You know, everybody's working from home. That's a perfect, you know, that's a perfect playground for even hackers to get into, you know, software. And as an advisor, um, we were basically told, you know, you are not allowed to use Zoom anymore. And, you know, they there were encryption issues and there were a lot of things happening behind closed doors that, that I didn't even know as a normal person. So um, just that, the, the fact that somebody could access your video controls while you were on a meeting with a client had a, had a, has a major impact. So I appreciate that you were really ahead of this curve um, on the cybersecurity portion and that, you know, you're already thinking about how you can help these people in our, in our area plan for the reopen because you're right, restaurants. If your capacity is X amount and you can only allow in maybe X amount, what is that going to look like for you uh, moving forward? So give me some more examples of other, you know, maybe more conversations that you have had or other scenarios that we should probably be thinking about. Yeah, uh, our innovation is, is something that we believe stands out and stands alone compared to uh, what the normal security approach is really. Um, you know, if you think about security to your point previously, 
everyone has a different context. One person you can ask and they say, Hey, what's security to you? And it's, it's bodyguards, you know, and then you ask another person and it's, well, you know, the, the old guy sleeping at a desk somewhere. Right. So that changes for everyone. And so what we've tried to do is take the context of security and bring it to the next level with innovation components. Uh, we use drones now for risk assessments and those aspects to really enhance that capability and bring it to the next level. So, what we had, even just yesterday, uh, we had a conversation with the manufacturing organization here in the Western New York area, and there was a consultation that we went through, and they're asking, well, how can we look at prevention for all of our employees when they're coming back uh, and when we get ready to reopen? And we talked again with them about innovation. Some of the new innovation components are having the thermal imaging and having the, the body scans completed at a distance instead of having the frontline worker having that uh, thermometer at your head. There's technology that you can scan them as they're walking up to the doorway. You know whether or not they have a temperature and are maybe uh, having experiences with the COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, they may not even know it. And uh, the, the temperatures can be read. And then you have the alerting system. That could be a, an on-site security guard. That can be to your HR manager. Uh, could be to the secretary at the front desk. It's all about the organization and, and how you're going to approach it. But um, you know, there's so much innovation now that, you know, even with this thermal imaging, you can have access control. Uh, so we're worried about the surface touching and these components and, and reducing the, the amount of things we have to touch in the workplace. Biometric access control now, we can actually use your face and your eyesight as you're walking up to a door. The new innovation reads your, your face scan without actually having any privacy issues as AI or intelligence um, with facial recognition. It's just looking at your biometrics and where your eyesight is. And it knows that you're coming to the door. It reads your body image to make sure that you are not having the temperature. It sees that you're coming to, let's say, door A. And as you continue to walk forward, your eyesight is right at door A. The access control can actually click and open the door for you prior to actually getting to the door. You never touch it, but it's still access control. So there's a lot of those types of innovation. And you have turnstiles now that a lot of organizations are going to. And again, you can have that facial recognition and biometric component. You walk up to it. It reads the body temperature, even with a mask on which is amazing. So you can have all the, the PPE supplies and techniques and, and still be uh, able to, to achieve success with security along with body temperature scanning. And again, to my, my point is you have manufacturers that are discussing this, but look at it from the restaurant standpoint. You have a restaurant that can put that on their front camera as you're walking up. And now they know whether or not patrons are actually coming into the facility. Maybe they're not at 180, you know, 200 capacity, which is their norm. Maybe they're at 75 for, you know, the month of May to get back into it. Well, they know whether or not those patrons have that and it gets the alert right to the GM who's on site that night. So, you know, regardless if you're looking at that, if you're looking at, let's say uh, Pilot Field or, or I forget the name now, actually, I think it's Salem's Field. Um, but for you're going to a Bison's game or you're going to the Bills game, let's say even, that technology components are there. Um, obviously, everyone's still learning these components, but the technology is there and then the opportunity to, to protect our community is, is certainly there. So that's the, the new aspects of what we try to talk about with organizations when we consult. So you mentioned thermal imaging, biometrics. Mm -hmm. For someone who already, and you said, uh, you know, these are through cameras, right? So for people yeah. who already have this technology, are they, you know, is this a brand new investment? Can, are there ways to integrate these things? Or are they looking at revamping everything all over? Yeah, yeah. So um, if you have a security system in place or even access control system in place, you can actually incorporate the thermal imaging uh, aspects into your normal system. Um, you have to make sure that they can integrate and basically talk to one another. If you have that capability and you have that accessibility, all you're doing is basically integrating that new kind of software and data to what you already have existing. Um, there is a bit of, a, of a, an investment into that, and it ranges, size of the facility, how many scanners you're putting in, how many thermal scanners, but you can range anywhere from a thermal scanner from anywhere between $750 all the way up to, you know, obviously $50,000, $60,000. It all depends on size of the project, scope, install, integrations, who you're having it speak to. So there's a lot of things that kind of play into that, but uh, it's an investment. For small businesses, I mean, the reality is going forward, these investments are difficult. Um, and, and that's the hard part is to kind of swallow that and say, you know, well, I can't make that investment right now. My receivables for April and May were, were nothing or very little. Um, so that's the challenge that we had kind of have to look at going forward is how do you balance the safety measures along with uh, the cost, along with, um, you know, protecting your staff, your community, 
and uh, everyone involved in the organization. So that's that's the challenge. You know, I see that though as you know, again, it, it, money financial is an op- is a challenge, but it's also the opportunity to recoup your losses. If you have employees who are afraid to come back to work because you know, what if so-and-so, you know, has a fever, they don't know it, and now I'm at risk, you know? There's manufacturing facilities that have had to redesign, you know, their whole production line just so they could fulfill these, you know, social distancing factors. So, you know, the for whatever investment it may be, the amount of uh, fear that you would re- would basically get rid of by creating this these safety measures, you're assuring your employees you're number one right now. I'm. I've invested in your safety first, and now they can go to work. They can feel safe knowing that um, they're protected. They're not with anybody who could potentially be carrying it. And that not only gets people back to work, but it gets people producing and uh, being able to make money. I mean, we know there's major disruptions in the in the food distribution channels. Farmers can't get people to come to work either. Now, you know, I guess the extra money that they're getting in their paycheck on unemployment doesn't help. But sure. the fear the fear factor is a big one right now. You know, yeah. how do I know I can go to work safely and not put myself at risk? You've got kids at home. Maybe you got parents and elderly people that are, mm-hmm. you know, at risk. So for me, you know, to me, it just makes sense. If I was a business owner, And my last month, my revenue took a major hit and I can't get people back to work because they're scared to come to work, but I can put these safeties into these safety parameters put into place. I mean, it makes sense to me. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. And, and, you know, last night I actually saw a commercial um, from Frito-Lay and this is by no means an endorsement for anyone or any business or anything, but the commercial really stuck with me because the, the commercial essentially said, uh, paraphrasing all of it here, but it, it essentially said, listen, COVID-19 has changed all of this. This is not a commercial to ask you to help us. This is not a commercial saying anything. But the reality is, is that we continue to put all of the safety of our clients, the, the product, and the community at, at the first priority. And for that, this isn't about you know, what we can make. This isn't about making a statement. It's about people. And that really stuck with me when I saw it because that's the reality. And if you're looking at it from that standpoint, everyone has fear, everyone has concerns right now. Someone has asthma, let's say, it's an underlying issue. And they're your worker. I mean, as a business owner, you give them the opportunity to come back and say, here's what I'm doing. You use it as a reputation component and saying, I'm doing this for not only you, for our business, for our clients, for our product, for our Western Air community, and you take it to the next level. And you showcase what you're, you're actually doing and putting yourself and safety at the forefront. And I think that's where all this is going to kind of lead to. It makes safety, which was quite consistently in the back burner of everyone's mind, regardless of what level it was at. Uh, it, it's bringing it to the forefront and having that discussion very candidly now. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity, a unique opportunity to, to do some work with individuals because you, you start shifting and looking at, hey, what can we do to make things better? You know, I mean, even to your point, the, the innovation of, uh, you know, manufacturing changing. Look at the airlines. They're talking about switching seats around and, you know, having dividers around. And, you know, I mean, that's a huge change to what our norm has been. And uh, I think that's just where we're at. The fear is there. What do we do to combat it? It's prepare and plan and get better. And, um, you know, again, it's about people. What at the end of the day are you doing as a business owner, a community leader, um, as a faith leader, what have you? Uh, to to really uh, showcase that this fear is not something that's going to be able to take hold and, and stop you from living your life. And this is what we're doing and how. And, uh, you know, we just want to be a part of a lot of that because uh, it's something that's pretty amazing to to be able to see come to fruition. So, Yeah, I mean, the you said, you know, so faith, you know, churches, mm-hmm. they're taking a huge loss right now, you know. Um, manufacturing they're taking there's i think every industry is ultimately get hit got has gotten hit in every single way so um to to summarize you know save time by uh incorporating these technologies into what you currently have maybe retrofit integrate or update you know however that may seem fit for your organization take you know they have the opportunity to talk with you uh, you're giving away a free uh, consultation. 30 minutes is what yep. is, is the starting point. Is that right, Mario? 
Right. Yep. Anyone that uh, has questions about what they can do to kind of get themselves to reopen, um, looking at new waters, how they can navigate, you know, plans. Maybe they don't even have a plan. They just kind of, uh, you know, never thought about it before. Whatever you need, you're looking at, hey, is my security system sufficient enough? Is my camera facing this way? Uh, my thermal imaging okay or what have you? Uh, even if you just want to bounce some ideas off and have a consultation and talk and say, hey, listen, this is what we're doing. We have PPE supplies. We're going to have hand sanitizer at the front door of our restaurant and et cetera. And you want to just kind of go through a checklist. We're here. We're here to talk. Uh, whether it's just an, an audio phone call, you want to have a Zoom conference like you and I are on right now, we're available 24-7, 365. None of that has changed for us during this time frame. So um, feel free to reach out, um, and uh, we're, we're more than happy to help. Good. So uh, to all of our viewers watching, you know, whether you're a small business, you're medium-sized manufacturer, faith-based, uh, service industry-related, restaurants, you know, this – this is a huge opportunity for you right now in, in these stages to prepare and plan before this May 15th deadline of a new possibility of having some freedom. So I know all the other states, they're getting together, the governors are talking, they're, they're planning their reopening. And New York State is probably going to be one of the last ones we know, but that is not a bad thing right now because it gives you as a business owner time. And how long would you say, Mario, between somebody calls you today to, um, you know, being able to evaluate what they currently have as far as their protective measures, cameras, you know, whatever that may be, their security measures, you being able to integrate or upgrade, how long could that process, you know, take? Could it, could it be done in a month? Yeah, it could be done in a month. Uh, that's the great part. It, it really depends on what's currently in place or what they're trying to achieve, uh, what, what you're actually looking at. You know, someone can say, hey, I just want my cameras put in, uh, and that's going to be sufficient for the time being. Sure. You know, uh, realistically, once we start moving forward, and you're looking at that, you can start, you know, we've talked with a lot of companies already that were security camera places and access control companies. And they're like, yep, as soon as we can get the clearance to get on site, we're going to be out and ready to go. And they have their project timelines and, and they're, they're planned out already. They're ready to roll and they have uh, their teams ready and, and to be on site. So, um, so basically know, what manage. you're saying is too then, you know, because you have these people already in place, you know, you mm -hmm. have your team put into place. It, it's actually, it would behoove someone to actually pull the trigger to get this done as soon as possible so they can get on the, the agenda and the schedules for these teams so that they can mobilize the minute that we're reopened. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're ready, essentially having a certain number of, of your, your uh, aspects ready to go. And uh, the state has yet to put out any requirements for uh, any business, whether it's a restaurant manufacturing facility, uh, even the construction industry, they're talking about construction being one of the first industries to open back up coming up. Um, you know, what's the checklist for construction site? What are you going to have? What are you going to do? Do you have your team check in with like a safety manager on site? Is your, you know, your project manager going to be taking that kind of uh, role on and responsibility on? And uh, if that's the case, you know, what are you going to do? Again, that's where something like a construction site, well, maybe that's where you use the drone. And uh, you take the drone and you're looking at or, you know, whether or not uh, you have the capability of making sure that everyone's safe. Hey, do you need anything out here? Where are we at with our team? How close are they? Um, you know, any of those capacities could be used. So it's never too early to start planning. And if you're looking at your business and saying, well, I don't know, it seems overwhelming. Uh, you know, again, we're here to talk and, you know, there's nothing associated with it. It's just we want to help. So, And I think we should reiterate the fact that, you know, the state might have its own requirements and they, they might evaluate their own uh, parameters when we reopen, but that's not going to take away the mental state and the mental effects that this has had on our society. And I know that you've probably had these conversations and I have too. Oh, I don't care if they reopen, you know, I'm not going to go there. Or I'm not going to go here. But for the people that are like immunocompromised, I'm one of them. You know, it would make me feel better knowing that, hey, these people took the lead. You know, state law requirements or not, they're taking the lead. They're being innovative. They have my business knowing that I cared, that I'm, they're, they're protecting me. They have me in mind. So mm -hmm. I think that this, is, uh, this, this isn't just a state. This shouldn't be a conversation just because the state's going to 
potentially mandate this or that. This is a potential way for you to position yourself as that business leader, innovator, and someone who actually is uh, showing that they care about their clientele and their employees. So Mario, thank you so much for your time. Um, we will have links to your website and uh, you know contact links so that people can get a hold of you. And I really look forward to you know circling back around to see hopefully what kind of conversations have come about really since we launched this podcast in hopes of what we're doing right here in Western New York being the innovative leaders that we are. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, Gwen. Thanks a lot. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Very good. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time.